Let's speak to Honey Lancaster James, who is a psychologist. She is uh, a lecturer in psychology at the University of Hull, and uh, she's also a big media star. If she you're looking indeed. for a, a media she's fulfilled. showbiz psychologist, <laughs> Honey Lancaster James is the lady. Honey, a very good morning to you. Good morning. Oh, I don't, I've never been described as a media star before. I'm well, very you complimented. Are. Listen, as soon as you're on this show, you're a media star lady. Oh, thank you so much. Are you fulfilled? <laughs> I don't know. I, I try to live a fulfilling life. I think, you know, we set out to do that, don't we? I try to keep a good balance of, of what's going on in my life. I don't know whether I always achieve that. Well, it's interesting that the results of this the research for ladbrokescasino.com, 94% feel that we're not living life to the max. And to be fair, because I'm in my bed for nine o'clock, because I'm up at stupid o'clock to present this show, <laughs> I feel that I'm not doing it. So, so why is it that we as Brits are taking, and I've got an excuse because I'm up here for this, but why are we Scots, are we Brits taking less time out to enjoy ourselves? Well, I think, I think there are several reasons for that. I think, first of all, you know, we live in a comp- competitive world now, which puts a lot of stress on us. There's a lot of pressure on us to perform. You know, as you, as you say, you know, you've got to get up early in the morning. There are lots of people who've got jobs where they've got to do that or they've got a big commute or something. So for that reason, I think our time is very precious to us. And I think there's this kind of feeling that we have to, you know, be very practical about our time, you know, make sure that we're getting our work done, make sure that we're getting time with the family. And I think it leaves very little time to focus on, you know, just having fun or, or, or just getting the odd thrill uh, and as you said the, the research which was commissioned by labbrookscasino.com which was really uh, to celebrate their new TV ad campaign which is looking at quenching your thrill buds and it's this idea that you know we're left with this kind of desire to get some thrills because actually we feel like we're leading a, a very boring lifestyle in fact in Scotland 50% of people said that they thought we were a boring nation you know so it's quite it's quite worrying really. It is isn't it and, mm. and the same thing saying that Scotland it's one in ten of us said the last time we had a thrilling experience was six months ago. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's it. Well, even more worrying, 6% of Scots admit that it's housework that gives them a, their buzz. That's yeah, we were talking about this on the show last week. And yeah. I mean, what state is your life in when the biggest thrill you get is getting the hoover out? You know, I can understand to a certain extent, you know, that, that, that some people find, you know, having a good clean up and a good tidy up is a, a kind of stress relieving, anxi- a, a kind of anxiety yeah. relieving activity. And particularly because it gives us some control over our environment. But I would hardly call that a thrill. You know, I'd hardly call it a buzz. I think there's something going a bit amiss there if, if that's the biggest sort of highlight of your day. Well, funnily enough, my wife says that once she's, you know, she'll mump and moan that we have the European ironing mountain in the whole cupboard. But yeah. once she's done it, she says she, she's a completely different woman. She's got a spring in her step. Really? So, and you know, as far as, you know, it may say a great deal for our marriage, but that's one of the biggest thrills that she gets. <laughs> but what health benefits are there in thrill-seeking? Well, there are some, uh, you know, health benefits. I mean, I think, you know, we can be flippant about this kind of topic and, and have a bit of a laugh about it. But actually, it is a serious one. You know, if it's all work and no play, you know, we are going to suffer, you know, the detrimental effects of that. So I think it's about striking a balance. You know, yes, you've got to get work done. Yes, you've got to clean up. And yes, you've got family commitments and everything else on your plate. But you must make time just to have fun sometimes. You must make time just to chill out, relax, or maybe, you know, have have a good night out, you know, get a get a thrill from doing something fun occasionally. You know, it's what makes life worth living at the end of the day. Otherwise, you know, what are we working those long hours for? Exactly, exactly. That's, I think, the, the main feeling that you do. You think it is all, all work and no play. Yeah. But what do we mean by thrill, honey? I mean, we're not talking about going skydiving or jumping off mountains, paragliding or something. Well, for some people it might be that, you know. I, I think it's a very personal thing. You know, as, as you, you know, for your wife, you know, um, Scott, it might be that she's, you know, has a good clean out of the closet or something but uh, you know for another person it could be you know taking a, a hot air balloon ride that they've always wanted to take or it might be just planning a great night out with your friends it's whatever you know gives you that feeling that you're having some me time you know you're prioritizing a fun activity you're not feeling guilty about it you're not being unproductive in fact you may well be being more productive in the long run by giving yourself these little thrills and these little buzzes in, into your life it'll keep you feeling positive you 
you know, and keep you feeling up there rather than sort of, you know, right under the, you know, the burden yeah. of all of those worries. Scott suggested earlier when we were chatting about this, um, honey, that it's maybe this country, you know, Britain as a whole, you know, is it the weather? Is it the whole, you know, that, that mm. puts us on mm. in that kind of mode, you know, that we do just want to go in and lock the door sometimes? Well, I think, you know, Britain as a nation, you know, obviously has a kind of um, a conservative uh, sort of feel to it. I mean, certainly other people see us that way, don't they? Um, and I think that to a certain extent, you know, we have this kind of, you know, we have this big empire, you know, we've got to uphold this image, you know, hardworking and, you know, successful. And that's a lot of pressure on us. And I think it would be nice sometimes if we take a little bit more of a sort of European attitude, you know, to life, you know, yeah. get out and sit out and have dinner with the family a bit more often and, you know, get out and smell the roses. Yeah. Um, so I think that is, you know, I think that is part of our sort of national persona. Trouble is, uh, over the course of the weekend, certainly the last few days, if I'd gone out and sniffed my roses, I would have come in <laughs> blue and so well, wet. Well, <laughs> yes, that's so true. That's anyway, true. honey, thank you very much oh, indeed. You're welcome. I'll let you get off and have another wee thrill. It's been a pleasure <laughs> speaking with you this morning. Thanks that's for honey, Lancaster, us, honey. James, the psychologist.